Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Invest.io. Today we have Tony Romeo and a co-host now added into the Invest.io podcast, Daniel Doyle. Today we're going to talk about um, shiny object syndrome and how cold calling and growing your business aligns together with focusing on just one thing. Thank mm -hmm. you for coming here, bro. Yeah, absolutely, man. So uh, let's take it with a question that Daniel was yeah asking right before we started this podcast. well tell us about uh where you grew up at and just kind of how your career has evolved into where it is today okay um i've kind of been in sales my whole entire life different aspects of it done phone sales done face-to-face uh, -face sales like at a car dealership uh and then now doing like in-home sales with buying houses yeah. from uh sellers uh just going back to the beginning, I did uh, phone sales for handicap accessible bathtubs and showers for elderly yeah. um, and learned a lot there just over the phone. And then that transitioned into doing more face to face sales at a car dealership at Stu Hanson Hyundai here in uh, Clive. Uh, I was born and raised on the south side, still live over there now, still have the majority of my properties over there. I am spread out amongst the metro, but have a couple over there mm -hmm. right now. Um, with that sales background, it's nice uh, because it's transitioned me into a business owner here to be able to uh, use those skills that I've learned along the way to be able to, one, be an appointment setter for myself, and then two, be able to close deals inside a house so as face-to-face -face sales as well, too. So those background in learning the uh, gift of gab on the phone yeah. or the... Uh, you know, uh, relationship building on in-home or face-to-face uh, uh, -face sales. So uh, those two things have capitalized uh, on our ability to be able to get deals or to find our own deals as well. Um, for our business-wise, we use like a paid-for-you service. Mm -hmm. um, so they uh, do the annoying part or the hard part. Like they get the 100 no's before they get a yes. Yeah. So this part that like really uh, downs uh, somebody or like messes with your mentality or your mindset or whatever, that we pay an, a service to do. Oh, nice. Once we have a good, strong lead, I jump in then, or my partner, Matt jumps in. It, it depends. We're in the weird transitioning, scaling stage right now. Yeah. We've hired on two new people to kind of separate ourselves from some of the tedious work or miscellaneous right. work. Uh, so we're in a really weird transition stage right now. Uh, I used to be like head of disposition, project management, property management, and, uh, like the gopher. Yeah. And now I've taken away from the gopher stage, taken away from the project man or uh, property management stage. Uh, and now I'm transitioning back into acquisition. That's where my bread and butter is. That's where I'm the best at is How like actually communicating with people and, and getting those, uh, building that uh, rapport, not the back end where I was kind of keeping the business alive because I knew that's part of it. Um, but yeah, what were you going to say real quick? Yeah, what do you, how do you discover you're good at call calling? How do you discover you're good at cl that closing part of the deal? Um, so for the cold calling side, uh, it, I mean, it was just a learning thing. Like I, I, if somebody shows me something, I can capitalize on it because then I put my flavor on it, my feel on mm -hmm. it, and then I can... And then it's just watching your numbers. Like you just seen, like I went from, you know, doing one handicap accessible bathtub appointment set to like all of a sudden I was the top guy doing 10 or 15 mm. in a week. You know what I mean? So it's like you just see yourself in those numbers and then you start to realize that, hey, this works. Right. Okay, this works. Okay, mm, that didn't work. Uh, yeah. And then you just start kind of like build your own knowledge with it or that's how i do it not everybody does it that way some people have to like read something before yeah. they understand it but me i just see it and then i put my flavor on it and i can capitalize on it did you have any really good training or mentors in sales when you were doing cold calling um, and car sales so what are some tips that they tell you yeah cold calling wise yes there there was one guy and i actually still talk to him today he's actually transitioned himself into a uh contractor and he actually owns his own property too so we've sold a couple of deals to oh, him cool. as well just kind of yeah. crazy how that worked out yeah. but it's really cool because by far the best uh, phone guy i've ever seen in my entire life and what i learned from him is you can be anybody you want to be on the phone mm. he has like six different alter egos wow. um his name is kind of hard to pronounce so he would always go with like zach johnson or <laughs> mark miller or you know what i mean so he legit like super, had alter egos were like yeah, different like aliases and, and, and they all had different uh wow. accents they all had yeah. different like spiels that they did so i just learned from him like hey like 
they're never going to see who I am. Like yeah. I could be whoever makes yeah. the most sense for them to right. be comfortable with. Yeah. And so that was something that really clicked with me. It's like, I don't like, what am, what am I uh, worried about in yeah. this little phone section of a five minute call right. or 10 minute call when you can literally be whoever you want to be on the phone. Cause they'll never understand like right. who you really are as a person or really care who I am as right. a person. You know what I mean? All they want to know is does that product work for me? How much does it cost? What's in it for me? Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, What's yeah, yeah. in it for What's me? It? That's the number one, number one go to exactly. like, uh, like, uh, I don't know the right terminology for it, but yeah, you, yeah it's the number one go-to for a seller or buyer. Right. I feel like the best sales advice that I've ever heard is be a good listener. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. if you listen and hear what people want and need, mm -hmm. then you can phrase what mm -hmm. you're trying to, you can, it can change your pitch, right? It's like, Absolutely. okay, this is what they're looking for. These are the terminology. This is the terminology they're using so I can go from there and do this. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like the same thing when you're going into to buying a home from somebody like what's important to you. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like walk us through. And a lot of people aren't going to give that up front. So you got to break down those barriers first. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty good at that. Like the relationship yeah. building part of it. Um, I'm good at uh, like I, it's my, my thing is like food. I don't know yeah. why, but I just go to food. You're everybody a eats. Well, yeah, everybody yeah, eats. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and as long as you talk about like uh, food things, you start to get, uh, like, I feel like, like I bring up restaurants, bring up like dishes, stuff like that. And, That's cool. And it just brings people down to like a, uh, Oh, well, their yeah. guards down. We They're all totally disarmed. Yeah, yeah. And then start That's talking cool. about like uh, family members I have in the restaurant industry and stuff like that. And they're like, oh, man, you know him, you know him. And then all of a sudden, boom, we're back into a relationship right. instead of, uh, hey, you're just trying to take something from me. Exactly. Or you're just trying to do something to me yeah. type thing. So that's a really good point because you yeah. talk about a couple of things there. You're like, yeah, listening. But then when you listen, then you're trying to build common ground. Yes. Right? Like, yeah, yeah. I'm going to try to find a common ground. Food mm -hmm. is easy because oh, everyone eats. eats. And, like, and yeah. I love food. So I'm sure I can find a food that we both like. 100%. And then you find common ground and then you build from there. Yep. And you start, to, you know, just talking about little things about it, like yeah. where are your favorite areas to go eat, especially like because if I'm going to a house, I know that they're probably going in a scale area of yeah, that area. Yeah. And so just bring up restaurants in that area or stuff like that, the people I might know. So yeah. I keep looking away and I can tell yeah, them. No, I, I have the same thing. Are we good? Man, that was that was really good stuff. Mm -hmm. I love what you just unpacked there. Listening and then trying to find common ground. Mm -hmm. That's That's really powerful yeah. stuff. Some people are like very fact based. Like yeah. my partner, he's the opposite. He's very fact based. He's like, here, let me show you the facts, and then you make a good educated decision. Right. I like to guide people along the way, yeah. and also to just like build a relationship. So right. they're like, hey, okay, I, I do want this guy to. That's another thing too. A lot of people don't do is they don't explain the process. Uh, yeah. I've known that, or I've learned that in this industry. Um, because like buying a car, everyone knows kind of that process, yeah. but like doing the house. Um, right. So here, let me change that. Buying a car, you might buy 10 or 15 cars in your lifetime. Yeah. How many houses are you buying in your lifetime? Or how many houses yeah. are you selling in your lifetime? Right. Sometimes one. Right. Sometimes none. Sometimes right. two. You right. know what I mean? So it's like, it's a very foreign thing to the majority of people in the marketplace. Right. So if you just explain to them, hey, this is what happens here. This is what happens here. This is what happened here. Dude, it makes everything so much smoother. And it's right. surprising to me that more investors don't and they keep this mystery about right. what's going to happen and i just hit them straight like hey this is what's going to happen this is what's going to happen expect this to happen yeah. hey if this doesn't go how we need to we're going to have to do this too and i know it's yeah. going to suck but it, i'm telling you now you know what i mean yeah and i've noticed that uh like kind of barrier breaker yeah. as well too you, you definitely get them to open up more and ask more questions that they were afraid to ask but now they're like oh you brought that up let's okay really so good. what do you yeah. do there i like that too because another thing that disarms people is like empathizing with their pain or what they're going through right yeah, like, yeah. like you just said every situation they're, different. they're going to buy or sell two houses in their lifetime one or two maybe none right mm -hmm. and so it's like i realize this is a big deal for you yeah and empathize with that and then on top of that education so i was a college basketball coach which those guys oh, wow. those guys in in nba agents or nfl agents sports agents are like the best salesmen in the world to me <laughs> and i yep. felt like uh one thing that i noticed from them which was really the, the best ones is they would educate you through the process yeah. so like even though you were choosing from their school and other people in other schools, like they were competing against other schools. The best ones would kind of, would empathize with you and that this is a really difficult process, really big decision, right? You typically choose one or two, like you might transfer a college if you're playing sports or whatever, oh, yeah. but you're gonna, you, you really can go to four colleges if you graduate in four years, right? Mm -hmm. So it's only, you're making four decisions, typically one or two, right? Mm -hmm. And so they'd empathize with you on that and then walk you through the process. And immediately, as soon as someone becomes an educator in your life, 
what is that? It, it changes the relationship dynamic, yeah, right? Oh, it's yeah. like, oh, you're like a mentor to me now. Yep, I was just going to say like father figure type exactly. mentor type thing, yeah. And so then what do you do when you're looking to make a decision on where you you're going to college at? It's like, I'm going to confide in you, mm -hmm. even though I'm, and you're actually trying to, it's such a weird dynamic, right? Because you're like confiding in this person who's trying to sell you on no, why yeah. their school is the best school to go to. And then what do you end up doing? You I probably like end up going to that school because you're like, you're my mentor. Like you've already entered this role in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go through. And obviously it's I feel different like it's with the houses. Same, well, I feel yeah. like it's the same concept. Like yeah. it's, it's almost the same exact thing. Because like you said, they only have one, two, three four at the max right. decisions to make this one is same exact thing they might have one two right. three four at the max houses i mean i wish i knew that number on what the average yeah it's a uh, good number that's a good stat yeah right yeah. because it's like we should I, look at that stat and then put it at the, I, at the bottom yeah, of this i bet this you that's video. i mean I, I bet you it's four or under yeah. it's gotta be right? right yeah it's gotta be like i'm uh, sure it's changing now with different generations but i bet like yeah. baby boomers and what oh yeah like yeah one or two or for three. sure and that's yeah. who we're talking to a yeah. lot like a yeah. lot of the times it's um elderly are looking for a different option it's well it's really it's so different because sometimes it's like like our thing is like either landlords that are giving up or have one deal and it just didn't go how they wanted to so right. they just want out or elderly people that there's a certain reason why they don't want to have like realtors come through their house and stuff right. like that or it's just somebody that's let their house go too much because they couldn't do the repairs on a constant basis right um so each one's a little bit different but they're all kind of the same deal you know just what I walking mean? them through the process yeah. and then that because a lot of I would assume that the people you're contacting, they've got multiple people contact, contacting them, right? Um, he, he, yes, they don't. Yes, they're not. not upfront with us telling us that, yeah. but you can tell the ones that have talked to others. Yeah. And then it's funny how they'll like tell you, they'll tell me, like they'll be like, "Hey, like, I don't know why other people don't do it like this." Yeah. And I'm like, hey, you know, I don't know either. I don't know either, <laughs> but I'm glad they don't. <laughs> yes, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm happy that uh, you said that, and not that right. they were already doing the right thing. Yeah. You know, what I mean, there's That's a reason cool. that I have this opportunity instead of yeah. them just doing the deal whenever they had the chance to. Right. Yeah, so, so really good stuff there. Yeah, go what on. projects are you currently working on? Um. So, uh, so going on with what you were saying about the spreading out. Yeah. So we've learned that we we spread ourselves too thin, and that's why we're hiring people on and scaling now. Um, we went from having like a really good closing ratio, and also to like a really good flow of deals, to um, you know time zine. I don't know what are the X's, but uh, five, not five. Yeah, I mean we went from one to three to six Airbnbs. Well building an airbnb isn't just closing on that we had right. to furnish it we had to rehab right. it we had to get it prepped we had to go through the picture process and the loading process of airbnb so all these things we were doing ourselves so we weren't capitalizing on our phone calls our follow-ups our deals that we were going right. to so we saw a little bit of a dip in our deal flow now don't get me wrong we're building forever wealth with those airbnbs right. but the problem is is like there's this double-edged sword like uh do you get immediate money today or do you get long-term right. money with your holds and your um you know other businesses sides right. or side businesses within the business um so we started to spread ourselves a little too thin also too we've done we're in the middle of two rehabs right now so that's another thing is but you're doing those rehabs um, yeah, I, I, I'm project managing them right now, but not wanting to. I'm not the greatest project manager. I've never done it before. I'm learning a lot of lessons, learning a lot of, yeah. uh, uh, you know, hits up against the head. Like, oh, damn, I should have done this. Yeah. Or, oh, I should have had this timing. So uh, I'm learning so much now to where I'm more comfortable with it. But uh, also, too, we're not doing it at a fast enough pace. We're not doing it at, like... We, we could be capitalizing more. So now we're starting to, instead of us try to make that a whole nother business we're trying to um uh pull on partners so we've done jv deals with other people mm -hmm. well now look, why aren't we doing more jv deals in in town so it's yeah. like we know how to buy and sell a house we know how right. to like run the back end of the house but we don't know how to run the rehab of it right. so let's just partner with a uh co general right. contractor here in town and make that work yeah um jv just, means joint venture yes so, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah joint yeah. venture that, that's where it's like a partnership yes yeah. yes yeah. yeah, where two businesses usually don't make their own business but just have a joint venture and the venture is the project that you're doing exactly yeah. yeah um uh i'm trying to think of what that that's really kind of our split is the airbnb and the and the rehabs it, how's the it really airbnb took going? a lot of time how's how's the airbnb going they were i mean they were doing awesome last spring and summer and then of course just living in iowa we have a very high seasonal rate so it's like we had a slow last two months but now we're seeing our books really mm -hmm. fill back up in the spring so it's like you just have to really get your um money right throughout the whole year and not just do be month to month you need to kind of take that average and keep that in mind for to be able to keep up with yourself in the winters um 
but good, good. I mean, uh, as long as the numbers work out, we would add more. We would yeah. continue to add him. What's your occupancy rate for the last year at your Airbnb? Uh, so we, um, we were steady at like above 85%. Wow. Yeah, we were solid. These are for, single family homes? Every single one's a single family home. Yeah, yeah. We only, How many rooms? So like, What's the average? So we have a two bedroom, three four bedrooms, one five bedroom, and one six bedroom. What's your sweet spot? What are you trying to like? If you're if you're looking at a house to Airbnb it, what are you like? Hey, I want um, a three one. That's yeah. a ranch. Uh, we garage. don't really have that like buy box you for it. Buy box but, yeah, our biggest thing is is did the numbers work to make that work? Uh, uh, and, and if that and if if we got a good enough deal to be able to put the because everybody forgets about the furniture. Right. So it's like you got another right. like on the small house you're at six to eight grand on the big house you're at eight to twelve grand. Right. So that's extra money that you have to put right. into this house to make it running. Yeah. Um. So a lot of people don't think about that, but that's definitely like the sore right. ones because like everyone's like okay once I get the rehab done we're good yeah. to go. Uh, you got to decorate it. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? You got to do that part of it, and that part takes a lot of time too. But we've learned to like. Take yeah. that off our plate. Let somebody else do that because it makes more sense for them. Uh, we're not interior designers by any means, and that's right. not what our flow is. So we definitely let s other people do that. Um, are you still focused on Airbnbs then? Or are you are you shifting your focus back now to wholesaling, cold calling? Um, we're shifting our focus back to wholesaling and cold calling. Now, uh, it's uh, we we just grew so fast in it that it slowed down everything else. But right. now we're like, Hey, it makes more sense to just keep finding those deals. And then we'll like cherry pick the deals that make the most sense exactly. for an Airbnb. But it's like, uh, putting all our eggs in the Airbnb basket. It was good up until the winter. And then all of a sudden it slowed yeah. down and now it's like, okay, no, we should have just kept that train running yeah. and then had the Airbnbs always in the background. Yeah. So I think we're transitioning back to wholesaling and finding deals and then like doing more joint venture deals. Yeah. Um, so like, uh, um, we don't want, I mean, we don't want to just wholesale everything. I mean, if there's an opportunity to make, you know, bigger right. money on the, on the, uh, rehab of it, of course, right. but we just learned our lesson on, we don't need to be the guy doing the, uh, rehab. Right. So I'll finish the two that we have going right now, but then going forward after that, like we'll just, uh, have a general contract. I almost said a GC, but we'll have a general yeah, contractor yeah, come same in. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, for the abbreviation for the <laughs> podcast. Yeah. So yeah. at what point, how do you find value wholesaling now? Like, is it you, you wholesale and multifamily or this something? Uh, so um, multifamily is so hard to find here in Des Moines. I don't know why, but it's like, it seems like more people every day uh, are searching for that. So it's like, we, we've just noticed our bread and butter single family. Um, we have had multifamily deals. The biggest one we ever had was a fourplex though. We had like three different fourplexes that we've done. Um, other than that, we haven't gotten anything above fourplex. Once you get above fourplex, now you're talking to a whole nother like uh, buyers group, um, as you probably yeah, know. Yeah, because yeah, you're five and above, or you're probably ten and above. Uh, uh, we try to be hundred and above. Yeah. Oh damn. Yeah, uh, way bigger than what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's a different. But we're not really wholesaling. I mean, I, yeah, it's a different. Yeah, no, I'm saying. Game. But what yeah. you're looking for, so you're can in that you, buyer's. Can pool. you even wholesale like multifamily at that oh, level? Yeah. Oh yeah, you for sure. At that level. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there's people that do. Uh, I'm in uh, two mastermind groups that that's all they do. Um, Which mastermind so, groups are those? So uh, I'm in. Well, I was in uh, the boardroom with Kent Clothier. Okay. Um, that was the one that like they hold their whole thing is wholesaling. Like that's what. Uh, well, no, no, they wholesale everything. Yeah. But there's some guys in there that only wholesale wow. multifamily. There's one out of Omaha. I can't remember what the hell his name is, but he only does massive multi-million dollar deals. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I mean, he's made wholesale fees, wholesale fees, half a million to a million dollars multiple times. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Which they're group doing is that? it. It's a single dude in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, oh, what mastermind? Oh, that's through the boardroom. That's, boardroom. that's through the yeah. boardroom. Yeah. That's he's cool. in the boardroom. That's really um, unique. We're in another mastermind. That's more of, um, single family home uh, yeah. uh, and process building. So that one's more of like, look at your business, check your numbers, check your stuff, and then make sure that you're doing stuff on a continuous basis. 80-20, we're in that group now. Um, and that one's more on building processes like to automate. like group, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's more about building processes to automate. Cool. So pull your, like, work on the business, not in the business. Exactly, yeah. Um, and so we're getting a little bit more from that one than we were at Boardroom. Boardroom mm -hmm. was just so big. We're talking about dudes that are doing, you know, tens of thousands of uh, deals uh, yeah. a year. You know what I mean? What's like, your deal flow? How many deals do you wholesale um, in a year? So prior to the, uh, doing all the Airbnbs, we were like averaging two to four months. Oh, great. Um, and then once this winter hit, I mean, we did like one a month for a couple months. And then we had one month that we didn't do one. We just bought it. Yeah. Um, so it's like our deal flow went way down, but right. we're definitely like 
trying to concentrate on getting four to 10 a month. Right. Um, that would be, and all of those are local. We don't do anything out of state and we don't, we do 90% of our deals are in the Des Moines Metro. And then we just started looking in Cedar Rapids, Iowa city. Um, we have two JV deals in Cedar Rapids right now. And then we have another guy that we're kind of working with Iowa city, but we haven't landed yeah. any actual contracts out there. We just started like advertising yeah. marketing out in that area. And when you're saying JV on wholesale, like walk me through uh, what, what's no, there. Uh, so the, uh, we JV'd on the deal as in like we, uh, you uh, bought it and someone else is going to do the, the, yes. the, the yeah. Rehab. So the, yeah. So we yeah. have a general contractor out there that, that's just oh, that, taking care of the but rehab. But that's not wholesaling, right? Yeah. Um, no. We wholesale it to ourselves. So we found it, took a fee off the top, and then also JV'd on, on the actual deal. So mm. we wholesaled it as, and we wholesaled it from our, our marketing business to our flip mm. business, and then our flip business uh, JV'd with uh, a general contractor out there. So then once the house sale, so we made money on the finding yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah, I get you. We'll, I get yeah, you. okay, good. Then we'll cool. make more money on the back end oh, for that's, the that's percentage of the deal. Pretty smart, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, uh, well, we have to pay for our marketing. You're I mean, we have to. So we just are up front with them. Like, hey, listen, like, if you want, we can JV on this, but we have to have this fee up front to make it so we can find more properties to do this continually. You know what I mean? And every single one of them are like, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, if the numbers work, the numbers work. So yeah, exactly. they're not mad at you paying right, for totally. your marketing. Yeah. Same way I have your deals. If the numbers work for me, I want you to get, I want everyone yeah, to get paid. Yeah. It's like you, you work, you should yeah. get paid. Well, yeah. and the more that you, or the more value that you're getting from exactly. getting paid, the more you're going to call me again. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's like, that. uh, we're not afraid to uh, one ask for that fee, and but also to pay somebody that's worth. Right. Yeah. Where do you see where where are you trying to scale now with the wholesaling? Um, like what what so step added, are you right now? Yeah. So we added on another acquisition guy. So um, like I said, we we did a lot of transitioning. So I went from disposition guy to now going over to like main acquisition guy. But we also are pulling on another acquisition person as well. Um, and uh, so as of right now, we went from one to, th or to three, if you consider Matt, but he's pulling himself out to do, you know, uh, capitalizing on the marketing, capitalizing on the accounting and taxes, and then right. also to doing all the back end stuff, like the annoying, like tedious stuff, Matt's kind of taken care of. So uh, he's like the back end guy and I'm the face. And I, I was just in the wrong position because I was trying to keep all the deal flow going. But now that everybody's like, because we hired in a deal coordinator too, that took off a lot of just Jeez. like paperwork yeah. stuff that I shouldn't be doing. I'm not good at, I'm not good at paperwork stuff. I'm good at like talking to people and having a, uh, relationship building, just like uh, yeah. uh, uh, communication. The acquisition side, yeah, 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 yeah. So well, I should be cool. doing that, yeah, but exactly. for like six months plus, I haven't. So it's right. like it just didn't make a lot of sense. And so uh, it's like let's capitalize on what we're good at. And and Matt's also too. He, he was the GSM of uh, Stu Hansen Hyundai, so he's a trainer by trade, or like he's has those skills on training people, hiring, firing, and training. So it's like you shouldn't be the acquisition guy going in houses. Right. You should be finding the people that we need to be going right. into the houses and yeah. then, you know, disposition, all the other positions as well too. So we're right now is yeah. the time that we're changing all of that. Yeah, totally. um, So we're at a real fresh time with all of our yeah, numbers and all relate. of our stuff yeah, right cool. now. Yeah. But Such a unique time. Cause like as a, as an entrepreneur, right. You go through that time period where you're wearing multiple hats yeah. and you have to, right. Yeah. It's like everyone wants to be like where I'm just working in my sweet spot, only doing things that I love and that I enjoy and that I'm really good at. But as an entrepreneur, you're starting out, you've got to do multiple things that you don't love yeah. just to make the business work. Right. And then yeah. you go through that time period where you grow and you can hire people to do things that you don't love that you're not passionate mm -hmm. about. Like some people call it like desire zone. Like I want to work in my desire zone, I'm not, not in my drudgery zone, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so it's great when you can hire people to work in your drudgery zone. Yeah. That it's their desire zone, right? And they love doing admin stuff. They love being a transaction coordinator. Yeah. They love all that stuff. And that's I a cool, it. exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, so it's great when you can find that. And I think as a business owner, that's really cool what you're saying is like, you know, we're getting to that point now where we're trying to, we're trying to hire people so that we can just work in our sweet spot mm -hmm. where we can really focus on what we do best and that's going to scale the business. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I've noticed too, um, uh, once you do hire in those positions, she's like, God, I wish I would have done this six months ago. Right. Like, God, yeah. we would be so much farther ahead if I would have just right. made that decision at that time instead of trying to keep doing what I'm doing to yeah. keep it afloat. But sometimes you just got to cut it and, and just try it. And right. we've learned that. Yeah. <laughs> so Is this a trade of yours too, Daniel? What's a trade of mine? Acquisition. Like, oh, yeah. Are you on he's acquisitions guy? Yeah. He, no, I, I mean, like, uh, he's a communicator. I actually like operating the deal. I love analyzing the deal and being like, well, yeah. this is where it's inefficient and this is where we can get better. I'm kind yeah. of more like, so it's like Matt. Yeah, I like yeah. Matt. I like, I like to analyze the deals and train people and operate. Yeah. I'm a coach, you know, like I yeah. love 
coaching and helping people develop and improve. That's why I like you so much. Yeah, mm. but you do like you do have the gift again. Like you can you can communicate <laughs> with people and talk to them. Like, well, thanks. Yeah, I feel that from you. Just like in Appreciate the it. couple of times that we've communicated. I could yeah. see how you go in sales, but but yeah, I could definitely tell me that. I don't, that I don't love sales. I'm not. That's actually my my brother. But you don't find uh, those deals. You, you, no, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. just saying it's not like. Yeah, it's not his bread and butter. It's, it's not, not my like bread and butter. Feature. Like my brother's a genius at like how to put a deal together and how to like make both sides feel like they're winning. You know. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm like, I'll operate the deal. I like both. I love both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but I like my sweet spot is like looking at a financial statement and understanding where the, like we can make money around the edges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would definitely be a Matt thing. Like yeah. he's just I'm like, like this is the way his brain works. Yeah. You know what I mean? I need a Matt. You need a Matt. <laughs> Matt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need a Matt. I need yeah. a Matt. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can't remember if it, I think it's in the traction book they have. Oh yeah, uh, Electric EOS. Uh, yeah. Well, I was gonna say the uh, uh, integrator and yeah. then visionary. Yeah, definitely he's the integrator. Yeah. Like he might not. He might not like it, but he's good at it. Yeah. 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 yeah so cool, it's, definitely see that in him. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think they'll wrap it up. Yeah. That's, yeah. That was, that's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty, that's a lot of information. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Especially once we start getting a little bit more flow on our new positions, dude, we could probably come back together and it, explain a lot more too. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It's just yeah. a weird time for us right now because of the transition. But you are, you, you plan to have that wholesale and acquisitions as your full-time job. Oh, yeah, Pretty yeah. Much. Well, I mean, it's my full-time job now, but that position, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, I will be the guy for that. Well, probably probably to. in six months, you're going to have the numbers to say this is what happened. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? we're planning on a really big spring. Yeah, uh, yeah so. the, the market we see is a good spot for us right yeah. now, so we definitely want to capitalize this spring and summer. So we'll bring you in in six months, and, yeah. but this doesn't need a this this doesn't need an outro. Like, as oh, it yeah. is, it was so good. Was yeah. it? Yeah. 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 yeah, it was good. I got to bounce. Yeah, right. always a pleasure. Uh, see you guys. Sebastian, will you get... Oh, yeah. Oh, see I looked at the wrong camera. <laughs> <laughs>